So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for coming out for this, our final in the series of lunchtime chats. Um, today, we have Mark de Vertai, who is the senior engineer on the project. And his concentration with this project was the sewage treatment plant. We brought you into the theater today because he's going to do a PowerPoint presentation. All right, so enjoy. He'll talk for about 20 minutes. And then if you have any questions, We'll try to answer them. Thanks very much. Thanks, Kathy. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank, thank you for coming. Um, as Kathy said, um, I've been involved with the hospital project. Uh, we, we were the company that uh, was responsible for the overall design and construction of the project, and this is one aspect of it, the sewage treatment plant. Um, interesting topic of discussion for lunchtime. I hope everybody's eaten and, or, or delayed it anyway. Um, I, sorry, I guess before I start there, uh, asked to comment on really three things and, and to explain them. One was the choice of the plant, how we, how we were able to choose that sewage treatment plant, how we built it, and, and a brief uh, description of how it works. Uh, start off by talking a little bit about what sewage is. It's almost entirely water. Uh, most of the volume of it, the water, is, is created by, by flushing toilets. What does it make up? What is it made up of? Uh, it's about, uh, it's a little less than 1% than solid matter, um, and less than 10% of it is actual human waste products. So it's really mostly water, but it is those uh, solid matter that we have to get out of it in order to make it safe uh, for disposal. So what is sewage treatment? Uh, it's really the process of removing those contaminants from the water, so that we're left with two things, environmentally safe water for disposal, um, and the separated solid waste for, for, for separate disposal. Uh, there are really two main requirements that led us as the design builders to the choice of the plant. One was the design and construction output specification, which is just simply a, a very large document that was put together by the BHB as our ultimate client uh, and their technical advisors, and it lays out everything uh, that we have to do in order to build the sewage treatment plant and to treat that sewage to, uh, to the highest possible level. The second uh, document was a memorandum of understanding, which is just another document between the, the hospital and the ministry, the Ministry of Environment in, in this case, uh, saying that you will, as part of your new development, build a, a, a treatment plant or find some other way, some other treatment plant, to treat your waste and you will treat it to this standard. So I'll talk just uh, very briefly about uh, standards of sewage and how you measure that. Don't want to get too technical, but there are two, two aspects. One is uh, what they call biochemical oxygen demand, and it's just a measure, really, of um, how uh, bacteria, the good bacteria in sewage, uh, works on all of the organic matter and breaks it down, makes it into something uh, that is safe to dispose of. Uh, so the higher the BOD levels, the more contaminated the sewer. The other one is uh, the measure that's used is total suspended solids. Kind of makes sense from, the, from its description. It's the bits that are in it, and you want to get down at the end of the treatment process to water that's, that's effectively clear. Um, so just as an example of uh, what the plant will do, the, the, levels, uh, the starting levels of the sewage um, are, are these very high levels, and, and the requirements that, that we were set um, uh, in order to meet with our design uh, were, were much, 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 much lower. I mean, you can see this 70 times less on the, on the contaminants and then uh, nearly 100 times uh, less on, on the solids. Excuse me. Do you want to wait for questions right at the end, or can we ask as we go along while we remember? I'd prefer to do it at the end. Do you, do you mind? Yeah, I can remember. Okay, thank you. Um, a little bit about the capacity of the plant, how much uh, sewage can it uh, treat. Um, we, we took measurements uh, of the amount of sewage produced uh, by the hospital. We uh, made allowances for the new parts of the hospital. And then one of the requirements of our client was that we were able to uh, design the plant with sufficient capacity for expansion in the future. So the total capacity at the moment ended up at 570 cubic meters a day. Uh, you can think of this as 2,000 bathtubs of water or nearly 120,000 flushes. Of course, it, it doesn't happen like that in hospitals. You have other sources of sewage, which is, the, the, say, the water from the kitchens, the water uh, from the laundries, and so on. Um, the actual throughput at the moment um, is about uh, 350. It varies, goes up and down a bit. Um, so there's you know, over 50% additional capa capacity in it. 
Uh, other considerations uh, that were made in, in, in choosing the particular type of plant were the location and the space requirements, always a, a, a big part of any kind of development in Bermuda. Where do you put things? How much space do you have? And the aesthetics, what does it look like? I um, uh, have a, a, a brief uh, diagram of the site here, and you, you remember Point Finger Road, of course, at the bottom there. Uh, the light green is the existing hospital and the existing continuing care unit. The blue is our new, new uh, acute care wing. Uh, and really the only space that we had left in, uh, to do a development like this was in the area uh, to the, I guess it's to the south. Um, we chose that area, there's plenty of room to do it. Um, the uh, s second part uh, that we had to look at was aesthetics. Um, this is an example of a small uh, sewage works. It's, it's a different technology from the one that we're using, but it gives you the idea. You've probably seen these as you fly into to uh, uh, Manhattan and, and to other cities, you see them uh, surrounding the areas. It's the same kind of idea, it, it removes the solids and it, it treats the water, but it's ugly, right? So we didn't want to see anything like that, uh, so we needed to put our plant underground, and this is what our sewage treatment plant looks like. Um, it's all uh, completely hidden under the car park, uh, with just a small area above, which is the, the entrance where you can get in and out of it. Construction of the plant, I mean, uh, very traditional construction methods, dig a hole, put concrete, build walls, and so on. Quite a big excavation, uh, 5,000 cubic yards. That's about 1,000 little uh, Bermuda trucks moving, uh, moving the material away. Uh, the structure is, is reinforced concrete. There's uh, just a large concrete box. It needs to be waterproof. It's, it's, it's under the ground, and, and, and obviously you don't want water getting into it. Uh, quite a steep, uh, sorry, quite a tall structure, about 21 or 22 feet. So you need thick walls, 16 inch thick walls on that. Um, all of the other construction uh, was pretty standard. There's some block work in it and so on. And then of course it has to be covered over with a slab. Um, there's a car park on top of that, but, it, but again, when you design uh, covers like that, you can't just uh, expect that they're only gonna be cars. So it's designed, it's about a 20 inch thick slab uh, you could drive the large crane over it or fire uh, engines or anything else that, that was needed. Uh, just in, in terms of the scale, it's difficult to see here, from uh, where the picture was taken, say at the edge of the excavation here to the end, there's about 180 feet. This is about 45 or 50 feet wide. So how does it work? Um, diagram here, it was also uh, in the exhibition there, but uh, talk about maybe uh, the, the, the three main um, sections of sewage treatment. Excuse me, you have primary treatment, secondary treatment, and tertiary treatment. Uh, the normal flow through the plant is shown in the, the blue arrows, and uh, we'll just run through that quickly. The sewage comes in, there's a, a screening uh, mechanism that removes the inorganic solid, so this will be uh, paper uh, and any other um, small, you, you often get things that people drop in the toilet, that type of thing, like uh, tops of pens or whatever. Uh, then there's primary uh, treatment, which is the removal of the sludge, and uh, sludge is the term for the organic solids, effectively, that are in the sewage. Um, once those are removed, um, the, the water will then continue into the secondary zone, which are large tanks that are able, uh, that, that, that um, give the uh, environment for that water and the bacteria in it to work and to uh, digest and then and, and eventually to, to, for the clean water to pass through the site. Um, the final stage is the uh, tertiary treatment, which is really the absolute final cleaning of the water. And they're really just, uh, we call them microscreens, it's extremely fine meshes that, that capture the last little bits of solids. And then um, it's removed uh, finally to a pumping station and it gets pumped out into the outfall uh, which is the main uh, sewer that runs from the city and uh, passes along Point Finger Road um, and out uh, to, to the sea. Um, other aspects of the plant, we talk about the primary areas and removing solids. We need to actually remove those solids. So they, these are collected automatically in a bag and removed from site. And same with the sludge. It's dewatered so that it ends up as a cake and uh, it's put in large bags and it's removed from site. And we'll talk a little bit about it in a minute about where that all goes. Um, the plant is designed so it can be bypassed for, for um, maintenance and so on. Um, so let's just move on from that and look at some of the actual parts in a little bit more detail. 
Uh, that's the inlet. I mean, it's just simply a big stainless steel box. This is a 12 inch diameter pipe that's coming out of the wall towards us. And uh, the sewage is collected from all parts of the existing hospital and the new acute care wing and uh, drops down into this box. And uh, it's then diverted into one of two streams. And these two streams are, are a, um, a feature of the plant so that um, if there was damage or, or a mechanical problem with one part of it, then it, it automatically switches to the other one. The first stage of treatment is the pre-primary, which is the removal of the inorganic solids. And that's again just done with a, a mechanical, um, by mechanical means. I mean, basically the water just passes through a screen, which is in this box here. And then there's a screw in this uh, um, sloped area that, that takes the solids up and deposits them in a bag. You can see that in this diagram. So you can just imagine the water coming in. Uh, the red dotted line is a screen. The water passes through that. The solids remain on the top and they're taken up in a, in a screw all the way up to the top. They're washed, right? And that's uh, done so that they don't smell um, or don't smell too much. And uh, then they, they drop down into a bagging machine. This is what the bagging machine looks like for the coarse screens. It's just simply a, a, almost like a continuous garbage bag and uh, the coarse screenings are in there and every so often somebody comes along, ties that up and that's taken away and it's taken to Times Bay because it's paper effectively, right? It just gets incinerated along with uh, the, the other rubbish that, uh, that goes there. The next stage of the primary treatment is the removal of the organic uh, solids or the sludge. Um, and by the time they get here, uh, they're, they're fine and they're in suspension in the water. So there's this piece of equipment called a Salzness filter. Um, and if I have a quick look on the other page, so again, another kind of uh, filter, except this one is a large moving belt. It's about three feet wide. Um, and the dirty water comes in here. It passes through the filter and becomes clean water on the other side. And then the sludge remains on the filter. And this just rotates round and round and round and round. And uh, it drops off the end and uh, is again collected there. Now I'm going to leave this area here about the sludge and continue to talk about what happens to the water and we're going to come back to that and, and talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, so the next stage, so, so that, those two stages that we talked about, that completes the primary treatment of the sewage. The next stage, the, the secondary treatment, is the biological treatment. And um, this is all about giving uh, the water there and everything that's in it the time and the environment for the bacteria to naturally work um, and break down the organic matter. So that's done in these massive large tanks. So up to now the water has been passing through relatively small uh, pipes um, and uh, at, at a relatively fast rate. So now it comes into these massive uh, areas of volume. It slows right down and there's plenty of time for it to, to sit in these tanks. And uh, each tank is, is a little bit lower, four inches or so lower than each one. It just gently flows through there as the bacteria does its job. Um, there are eight tanks, in, sorry, eight tanks in total, four in each stream. Each one's about 20 feet long, holds, holds 11,000 gallons, quite a lot of water. Um, the next one it, you know, shows you a little bit about what happens inside of these tanks. So that bacteria, uh, a lot of it is, uh, re requires oxygen, like, like a lot of living things do. Some, some, doesn't, some doesn't require it. There's uh, anaerobic bacteria that works without oxygen. But in order to provide that uh, environment that it was talking about, uh, there are a series of compressors that blow lots and lots of air into these things and keep everything moving around and, and, uh, and oxygenated. And then uh, the bacteria, in order to work properly and to break down uh, uh, the organic matter, requires lots and lots of surface area in there. And the way that we do that in these sewage treatment plants is we fill them with lots of these little balls, right? And if you can imagine that, it's uh, a little bit bigger than a golf ball, a little bit smaller than a tennis ball. And it's designed so that it has an awful lot of surface area. You can see all the fins and so on in, in a very small volume. And uh, there are literally thousands of those in here. And uh, they float slightly, so they're held down by a, a grid that you can't see that's under the surface of the water. And uh, that allows the uh, bacteria to do its job. And meanwhile, the water is continually flowing from tank to tank all the way down to the end of the stream. Um, the byproduct of, um, of that bacteria breaking down the uh, um, organic compounds 
um, is more sludge. It's called activated sludge just because it's been through the process already. Um, and uh, we need to be able to get rid of that to get to this clean water um, uh, situation that we need at the end. So again, they're just two more pieces of, of equipment um, that uh, then give, give the, um, the water stream a chance to slow down. And uh, it's that slowing down of it that allows the uh, solids to drop out slowly. And that's done in these things. They're effectively large tanks with uh, sliding or, or sloped plates in them. And uh, the sludge just settles on them goes to the bottom and then it's pumped off to join the sludge that we talked about uh, previously. Uh, this last piece here is really the, the, the tertiary or the final level of, uh, of treatment and it's just an extremely fine screen again. It's actually a rotating screen in this uh, case so the, so the screen rotates, the water passes through the middle of it and uh, the very, very, very finest last particles are trapped there and again they're pumped back to the same place as the rest of the sludge. Uh, the last stage for the water then is just the final pumping. Um, this is a large um, underground um, tank with three big pumps in it and uh, all that happens is it fills up when it reaches a certain level. It gets pumped out and then this is the, the, the final pumping thing so the, the, these are the ends of the three pumps. They come up and they join and at this point there's the ability to sample the water because the environmental authority requires that. The hospital requires it to, to, to know that uh, we have designed the plant properly and it's doing what it's meant to do. Uh, and then there's flow meters and so on. And then this pipe here is the one that ends up uh, going out to the street and joining the, the main sewer coming from um, Hamilton. Um, back to the sludge. So all of that sludge that's come from three sources, we've, we've had it from the primary sludge removal, we've had it from the lamella filters that take the activated sludge and, uh, and, and trap it and then we've had it from that final uh, tertiary, the very very fine rotating screen. It all gets pumped back to a large tank that you see behind here. It's mixed together and then it's dosed with other chemicals that uh, cause it to uh, flocculate, to join together, form clumps um, and those are pumped up to uh, a dewatering machine up there which is effectively uh, very similar to the screen uh, that I showed you before that ro rotates. Uh, it's just a screw that uh, allows the water to, to drop out and uh, the sludge itself to be compressed and dried. And what you end up with is, is something that looks like this. It's uh, maybe not a good picture, but I can't really think what, what would be a good picture of it. Um, it's, uh, it looks dry, it's cake, right? And uh, then it's automatically bagged in, in uh, this machine here, which is just simply a great big uh, uh, poly bag uh, that's on a weighing machine and when it reaches a certain preset uh, weight it, it tells somebody to come and empty it. And then that bag uh, can be taken away to Tynes Bay also because it has, uh, as Tynes Bay call it, calorific value. It can be burnt, right? Um, and uh, as Tynes Bay uh, you know, continues to uh, upgrade its, uh, its waste to energy um, facilities, the, the turbines that, that are, are there, uh, it's another source of, of free fuel as it were. Um, so everybody wins with that one, I guess. Um, so that really uh, brings me to the end of my little chat. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'll try my best to answer them. And uh, thank you for coming and listening to that. So, so sorry to cut you off in the thing like that. Um, it's the, sort of the, the quality standards that you mentioned. Yes. They, they, are, they are international standards. I mean, the, um, the whole of the, the hospital, although, I mean, let me talk more about this, was designed to, to Canadian standards, and that's because the hospital uses uh, Canadian standards for all of their certification and so on. So um, they were designed to standards uh, produced by them, um, although these were exactly in agreement with uh, what was required by the Department of the Environment here. So that, that's, that's it. And if you look at, if you can remember those two figures, 10 and 10, I mean, if you, you look them up, you'll see that that's pretty high quality effluent. Well, I'm curious what the hospital was doing before you built, constructed this with all their sewage, sewage treatment. Did it was- Did they on site prior or? It was um, being, being pumped straight into the, um, into the, sewage, uh, the sewage line. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry, Kathy. It was being macerated first. And then, 
pumped, yes. pumped out. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, like anything, you, I mean, there's certain things that you shouldn't put into to sewage. I mean, um, but the the way that the plant is designed, it's designed to take out, um, you know, if, if rags or, or small pieces of wood or whatever happen to get into the, the sewage, it takes it out in that first uh, inorganic screening process. Um, but we do have a separate um, way that we handle what we call red bag waste. So yes. Yeah, and, and uh, again, it, it's not um, the, the hospital policies, as, uh, as I understand them, uh, that stuff does not go into the sewage. It, it, it is handled in this red bag waste, uh, which, I mean, Kathy would, would know more about than I do. So. <laughs> no. I, yeah. 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 Sorry, Madam. Um, I'm from Seabright. From, from where? Seabright Avenue. Oh, Seabright Avenue, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just fall about it. Like, you know, everybody's wondering what's, what's being done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Is there a chance that the excess capacity that the plant has uh, would be put to use for other sewage? It's, um, it's not something that I know anything about. I mean, it, it is possible because the extra capacity is there. Um, quite how you would go about it or, uh, or what agreements would have to be in place to do something like that, I, I couldn't comment on that. Uh, so, the, so the treatment facility is, let's say, set up to receive sewage from other sources? No, it isn't. Sources. No, it, 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 uh, it just uh, receives it from the, uh, the current BHB campus, the, the area there. Uh, I mean, at the end of the, the day, it's just pipes. I mean, it would be possible. So it is possible. Well, uh, again, it wouldn't be my place to, to comment on it, but it is yeah, possible right. to. You can't take that particular that yeah. uh, uh, This guy, he wants to pay. <laughs> Come on, Ian. Uh, I want you to resist saying anything. Um, the Hamilton produces over half a million gallons. Right, sorry. that. Th th this is um, Ian Hind. Ian Senior engineer for the Corporation of Hamilton. Um, Hamilton, without cruise ships, produces half a million gallons a day. I can't remember how. We had, uh, <laughs> yeah, an, an, an awful, awful lot more. So, yeah. The, the, yeah. Double instantly. Yeah. That is not designed to cut yeah. with. Yeah, that and when the cruise ships are in, when we used to have the two a week, you know, right. if you know the time, right. we were hitting um, 800, 850,000 uh, gallons a day. Right. So, we would need something twice that size. Yeah, and you, and you just not, not to interrupt you in, but you just have to think about it in terms of uh, it, it's, uh, the hospital is one building, albeit a very big building with many floors and so on, versus a whole city. Um, so. In terms of any kind of kitchen waste from the hospital getting into that, presumably there's a, some the procedures in place to ensure that inappropriate. Yes, the, end up yeah, and, and this goes back to. Um, to something that the corporation is working on and, and has got it in place now where, where oils and greases and so on must be removed at the, at the source or in the kitchens. Yeah. What would happen if, if they weren't? Um, it, small amounts of it d doesn't matter, right? This type of plant would uh, remove it along with the sludge removal, right? Um, so it would end up in the bags that go to the incinerator. Um, but again, too much of it would clog the screens and so on, and it, it's just not the right thing to do. We so, do yeah, they the they do. Just updated that system, so right. Yeah, on. yeah. Does that system take much maintenance and cleaning? And yeah, I mean it. It um, it takes the, the maintenance that you would expect with mechanical mechanical and electrical equipment. So it needs to be. Uh, maintained on a regular basis, so electric motors are checked, uh, bearings are changed, uh, all the sorts of things that you, you would do with a large air conditioning unit or a motor car or something like that, that type of maintenance. But it's designed so that um, there are two main streams. So anything that has a lot of mechanics or electrics in it has two streams, so one can be switched off and, uh, and the other one run. Or in fact, that's not, not actually correct. One of them, only one of them ever runs at a time, so it's duty and standby. Um, so they alternate. If, if both are working fine, they just go backwards and forwards. Uh, but if this one has a problem, this one kicks in and stays on, and the, the, it automatically tells somebody there's a problem with it. So so. Time, That's right. They have time. So it's all the pumps, everything's like that too. So. Mark, I think one last question might be about the amount of sludge being produced. How often do you think bags would have to go to find space? Is this going to be? I mean, it. Uh, Again, it depends on, uh, on the, the usage, the population at the time in the hospital and so on, but um, the estimates that, that we've seen, that, that we've made and that we're, we're seeing to be uh, about right is about um, 200 kilograms a day um, when the plant is running, running f full out, which, which as I explained before, it isn't. So uh, that big bag that we saw there, that would be a little less than a third of the capacity of the bag. So, you know, with the, the, the people who are doing the maintenance are still coming to terms with this and uh, they may decide to use a smaller bag and, and empty it more often or, uh, or uh, let that bag fill up and so on. Uh, maybe one last point that I didn't talk about that sort of interests people and often gets a question is, does it smell?
right? Because that's what we associate with, with sewage treatment works and that's what we see sometimes with these open ones in other countries. Um, yeah, of course it, it smells, but the, the fact that it's underground um, uh, requires that it needs, to, needs its own special ventilation system. So every single aspect of it is uh, piped uh, to a large carbon filter scrubber um, that removes a lot of the odors from it. And then, in fact, uh, it vents uh, across the car park and into the main building in a duct and all the way up to the top of the, the new building and is discharged out there. Um, so it's, uh, again, fr you know, from that point of view, you, you don't have the, some of the unpleasant things that you get with sewage treatment plants a lot of the time.